let's say we, are, uh, we understand the concepts of C++, but, um, but let's say we didn't have a C in or C out. So we wanted to design our own input and output for the, for, for, uh, for the I.O. If I wanted to do something like that, what would I do? So first of all, I have to use my knowledge of C for this to, to do the input output. So I'm going to say include C standard input output. And of course, using namespace STD. Now, because I don't have C in and C out, I have to create my own object. So the object that I'm going to create, the class that I'm going to create, uh, val, the, the thing that I'm going to create, the class that I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to call it output. So it's going to be class output. The output class of mine's job is going to be to output stuff for me, so I don't have to care about what I'm printing. Integer, string, I don't want, I don't want to think about, I just want to print, and it print for me. I don't want to remember what was percent D and percent S and all those things. So what I do, I simply create public overload of functions to do the things for me. So I'll go void, print, uh, for example, integer uh, val, and then in here, I'm going to say printf percent D and val. So essentially, I do all the dirty work that is being done with print printing stuff behind the hood, under the hood of output for, uh, class. Say I want to print a, a character string, I'll go void print uh, const character pointer str, and I just print that one if I want to. So I'm going to say printf uh, str, right? And I print the string. So if I want to use this func this class of mine, and many more things, double whatever I want to print, right? And if I want to use this uh, class of mine, what I will do is to, um, uh, first I have to instantiate it. First I have to instantiate it, so I'm going to say output. So since I wrote it, I'm going to call it f out. And I'm going to say f out dot print. Uh, my name is Joe. And I am. Now I want to print the integer. I'm going to go f out dot, dot print. So I don't need to care about what, a, what I'm printing. I'm just going to put it, and it's going to pick the proper function for it. So I am uh, 25, and I'm going to go f out dot print years old. And go to new line. So if I. If I run this program, obviously it's going to run, and it's going to pick the proper thing and call it one by one, and it's going to print the, uh, the message for me as, as a straight line. My name is Joe, and I'm 25 years old. OK? Now, of course, uh, I just learned that I can use references to return reference of objects out from functions. So instead of returning void, what I can do over here is to return uh, 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 the output itself. So I'm going to say output, reference, print, and I'll return this over here. So I'm going to say return this. And then I'm going to have again output. Reference, and in here I'm going to say return this again. Okay, now that I have done this, this print statement, after it's done, it's going to return its owner. What is the owner? It's f out, correct? So essentially, it's going to return the f out, so I can simply bring this print up and put it right after that, right? Because it's returning f out, first it's going to print my name is Joe, that's going to return f out, then it's going to say print 25, right? So 25 is going to get printed, and then the same thing, I can bring this one up over here. So it's got to be, whoops, too much. And kind of go in one line. Now it's getting better. It looks, looks better like this, OK? But that's not enough in enough. I know how to overload operators. So I'm going to rename those print state print functions to op operator overload. So instead of actually putting print over there, I'm going to say operator left shift. And I'm going to just rename it. 
nothing else. It's, I'm not going to change any code. That's that. So essential op operator. Operator. So, so essentially, this is going to be the name of the function. So I can change this print now to operator left shift. And again, if I run it, it's the exact same thing. No difference. It's going to print it out. Are we OK with this? Now that I have that, I can actually use the operator way of calling that thing. So instead of saying f dot operator, I can actually do this. Does that look familiar to you? It's C out, right? That's how C out works. There's no magic behind the thing. C out is essentially a class that prints stuff out. And they overloaded the prints function to do that. It's the exact same thing. On run this, it's going to work the exact same way. It just calls the functions one by one. So the C out you are using, that's C out just by itself. There's no magic behind it. It's just, just a simple class that is instantiated into an object. What is the name of the class? O stream. What is it instantiated into? C out. How come we have access to C out everywhere? Because as I see, it's only in main that I can see F out, correct? What if I put this output of mine in output.h and instantiate my output F out? inside there as an external global variable. You still don't know how to do it. What you can do, we can do it. So essentially, C out that you see is a global variable. It's a global instance of a class called O stream. And you keep using it and print stuff on it. There is nothing extraordinary about it. C in is the exact same thing. So when you are dealing with these things, remember, these are just objects that you are using. There is nothing behind it. And it's just operator overloading in action. That's all. So that's what IO is. I can do the exact same thing with C in. Instead of print, I'm going to write a read, and I'm going to change the read to a right shift operator. And instead of passing an integer, I'm going to pass a reference of an integer. And I'm, I'm going to do a scan of into that one. And it's going to work exactly the same way, as if I'm reading something into it. It doesn't make any difference. Are we OK? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? We are OK. All right, now that we are OK on this, now let's actually go into. So I'm going to say over here, um, 0, 1, how O stream, I'm going to say I O stream, see how it works. Hi, oh, how stream C out works. We have done it. Now let's go back to our string. Quick review of the overloading that we have done. We do some more overloading, talk about like review the uh, dynamic memory allocation and all those stuff. And I want, uh, um, how many of you have class with David Humphrey? David, my friend, you don't? OK. Yeah. Anyways, that's OK. Just wanted to see how many of you are actually doing programming. OK? So this is the only programming subject that you're having. OK, so I think he teaches JavaScript. I don't know. Anyways, because um, uh, with him, you do real programming. So what I want you to do, what I want you to do, you, you, I want you to, uh, go through these things for the next day that you're coming in. So I said we're not going to have a workshop. You're not going to have a workshop at home. You're going to have an only in-lab. And in that in-lab thing, we're going to start doing things together. So we're going to get this string thingy and add features to it, OK? Uh, and try to do it all together. I'm going to put you the description of what is supposed to be done, put you in groups of four and five, sit together, and try to come up with a solution of how it's done. And when it's done, you all submit it. And we're done, OK? So. Uh, it's going to be a hands-on work to, to, uh, in, that, in that day to see how we are going to actually do the 
anyways, so I'm going to uh, get IO stream over here. I'm going to include my string that we have uh, created, string.h, and use uh, uh, namespace. What is the name of this? With SDDS. So int main, return zero. So let's go through it. Uh, the things that we have done string header file and h, separate it. We wanted to, I give a challenge to the other class that is for 5% for the first test, whoever can do it, if they can send me the code, okay? So listen closely when we get to the challenge to know what it is so you can understand what's going on. If you do it and give it to me, I'll give you 5% here for your first test, okay? 5%. 45 percent for your test? <laughs> yeah, wishful thinking. Anyways, all right, so... We want to encapsulate, so our uh, uh, task over here was to encapsulate all the things that we use for a C string so we don't have to deal with all those dirty stuff that we do with strings in C. What I mean is that make sure that it's null terminated and it's an array of characters. Do I have enough space to hold the name? How big I have to have the string to be able to uh, put something in it? So it's, it's kind of a hassle. So I don't want that to happen. So what I want to do over here is this. I want, I want to actually make this string be self-sufficient. I want it to uh, uh, be automatic, to know how much space it needs for things and do it. So to do that, first I have to put all the specs that uh, a C string needs to have so I can contain it in here. I know a C string is an array of characters, therefore, uh, and we know an array is essentially a pointer pointing to a piece of memory with lots of stuff sitting sequentially. That's what I'm doing in here. At line 7 of the header file, I am creating a, a, a character pointer to um, a character pointer that is supposed to hold the data for a string. The whole hassle of C and something that you have done, many of you have done in your, more, and in your assignments and you've got to get comments for me, you kept calling strlen to... F to to have the length of certain string in five lines back to back. We don't want that. SDRLN is essentially a for loop. It's a loop that starts from the beginning, goes to the end, hits the null, counts how many times, and sends you what is the, the answer. So calling it is expensive. Every single time it has to do a loop. Why do I have to do that? For that, I'm having an integer inside my string, and I keep that integer updated. Anybody wants to know what's the length, I just return the value. I don't have to every single time see what is the length over and over and over. When I'm building the string, I'm going to see what is the length. Done. And when I destroy it, I make it zero. So anybody wants to know what's the length, so here's the length. I'm not, I don't need to go count it again. Okay? So... So, that efficient thing that I said, to make it efficient so it, so it doesn't have to do loop over and over and over, uh, again, because we are doing it on the fly, there's, uh, there's no rehearsing. I did not do it at home and come over here. I want to do it with you. So, you will see that time will come and we'll see some of the things that we planned won't work and we have to work around it, a real application. Hopefully, by the time we're done, you can actually use this string for whatever you want. I, oh, one more thing that I mentioned in the other class. I keep getting questions like this, uh, that they're telling me, like, if I use the code that you put in class, is it called plagiarism? I'm your teacher. If you don't use your teacher's code, then what the heck you're doing here, OK? Uh, using, the, using my code, any of your own code that you have ever written from IPC144 till now, please do it. That's reusing your code. It's good. Okay? So any piece of code that you have somewhere, you can simply bring it and add it to whatever you want. There's no problem with it. Okay? Keep that in mind. All right. So when I create a string, 
I, the very first thing that uh, we have problem with regular strings in C is that when you create an empty string, the string is not empty. It has garbage in it. I have to set it to zero, make sure the first character is all those things. I don't want that. I want to make sure that when I create a string, it's empty and it's ready to use. So I create a no argument constructor that is also called a default constructor. So a default constructor to actually set this thing to an empty string. As I mentioned, I don't design the string. I, ha I don't have the intention to have a safe empty state unless I have to. So for now, I'm not looking for that thing. So how do I actually set it to an empty string? What I will do is essentially I'm going to first set the length to 0 because that's what length of a, of a string is. Then I'm going to actually allocate. I'm going to actually allocate. Uh, one character over there and set that one character to zero. And by doing that, I have a string that has only one character and it's empty. Why I'm using that notation? Why I'm not only saying new character? Why I'm putting the square bracket around it and I put one over there? Because I want my destructor to be able to take care of everything. When I'm deleting the data as line 21 over here in assignment operator, I'm just deleting the data with square bracket. If I have different types of construction and memory allocation, then I have to have different types of deletion for it. Because I don't want that to happen, I create everything same way. Even if I have one character, I'm going to make it an array of one element. So when I'm deleting it, I can use the square bracket with no problem. So. That's that, but if I, so this is when I actually want to create something like this. So I just took care of creating a string with no argument in it. Number two, I want to be able to create a string and set it to whatever. Okay? If I want to do something like that, I need to be able to create a, a constructor for that. Now, assignment at the moment of creation is... Assignment at the moment of creation is? 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 Pardon me? <laughs> okay, assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a? Constructor. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a constructor. What type of constructor? A one argument constructor. Okay? Remember, assignment at the moment of creation, all of you knew, but you were too lazy to answer. I knew you knew it. Okay? So, assignment always at the moment of creation is a constructor. What type of constructor? A one argument constructor, and there are no exceptions about it. That's always the rule. So I have a one argument constructor that accepts a uh, argument. It accepts an argument. Of course it accepts an argument. Yeah. What type of an argument at line 8 I'm passing to it? Uh, constant char Constant <laughs> character pointer. That's what I'm doing. Uh, a literal string value is actually a constant character pointer, right? So I'm passing it a constant character pointer, therefore we created this constructor for it. A constructor that accepts a one, one argument constructor that accepts a string, a, a constant character pointer. And that's exactly what I'm doing. But bec uh, and what, how I'm actually doing the copying, when I receive the constant character pointer, I find out what is the length, I put the length in the length, then I add, then I allocate memory, but I add one for the null, uh, add one extra for the null, then I do the string copy comfortably because I know the size matches. Therefore, it gets copied and everything's done. And because I'm doing this over and over, I'm doing it in a function instead of keep writing the thing over and over and over and over. That's why I have allocate and copy. And because essentially creating an empty, empty string Creating an empty string is allocating enough space for an empty C string. 
I could do allocate copy and copy an empty string in there. Although this one, line 11, is more expensive at uh, line 8 because I'm doing a function call, but because it makes the code unified and consistent, i rather have that one instead of this one. That's why that's going to be commented, and this is what I'm going to do. I like to reuse my code more than I want it to be fast. These days, computers are fast. If you have a good maintainable code, you're the winner. If you have the fastest code, who cares? The computers are so fast. The website is going to take five minutes to come up anyway. Now you did it five milliseconds faster. Hooray! OK, unless you want to write a game, then that's a different story. You have to be fast because characters want to go and blow each other's in the face, right? To shoot each other in the face. Because of that thing, you have to show the blood going everywhere very quickly. Therefore, you have to be fast, right? Get characters and stuff. I know. I specifically say that because I hate it. Like these days, that's all the game. Like you don't have any nice games anymore as we used to before. Graphics are getting so good that they don't need to think about the story anymore. You're all the same. Machine gun shooting each other. Beautiful. That's it. Nothing else. Machine gun shoot each other. Anyways, and I'm recording this. So people, design better games for heaven's sake. My child is growing up. <laughs> I want her to play something nice. All right. So, so, so I, it's, it's, it's afternoon. It's a Friday afternoon. Everybody wants to go home. I want to go home. That's why I'm going crazy. So anyway, so what I want to talk about, what do you say? No, no, I don't want to talk about it. Thank you. OK, so, so, so that was the character string that we have done. So now, if, so that, that, that actually helped. So I can actually create something like that. Now, what if I want to create something out of something else? What if I want to create a string C out of A? If I want to do that, then I have assignment at the moment of creation that is constructor. What type of constructor? Class pointer. One argument constructor. What type of an argument? Uh, line nine. Uh, that's the true. Yeah, it's a character string. No, it's not a character string. What is right A? Now. What is type of A? What is line seven? Left. Oh, wait, it's a, a class instance. It's a class instance string. So, so I am building a string out of another string. That's the exact definition of copying, right? So I have to create a copy constructor. And we said in the world of object-oriented programming in C++, copy constructors have only one signature and only one signature, so help me God. We do not change this thing to anything else. That's the signature it is because we want to prevent a paradox. If you have anything other than a reference over their past, then it has to do a copy so it can do a copy. And you can't do a copy using a copy because then you are defining yourself and you're going to be in an endless loop. You're copying the copy, the copy, the copy, the copy. So it's not going to work out, right? Therefore, it has to be a reference so we are not in an endless loop. Therefore, that's the thing. So I receive S. S is essentially a new name for A in this case, which is going to, again, call the exact same allocate copy and set the uh, data of the object that is getting created to the data of the object that is coming in. And it's going to be a perfect copy of that one. And that's it. Every single time you have a copy constructor, you must have an assignment operator. And that's the rule for it. Why? Because if you have dynamic memory allocation, you got to make sure that your objects are copied properly. Because if the objects are not copied properly, what is going to happen? When one object, when an object has data outside of its territory, outside of its scope, when it's getting copied, when A is getting copied to B, if you do not hack into the copy mechanism and, and assignment mechanism of C++, it's going to do its own copy. And therefore, when it's doing its own copy, when it's doing its own copy, it's going to copy the content of one class into another, regardless of what we have in the uh, uh, heap, in the dynamic memory allocation, or whatever is outside. Therefore, A that is M data, whatever it has will get copied to M data of B. Size will get copied over there. 
and therefore they are both are going to point to the same memory location, hence memory leak, which we do not want. And when the first one gets destroyed, the second one has nothing. And when the second one wants to get destroyed, that's when it crashes. So at any moment when you are writing a program and the program seems to be working properly, and at the end when everything's over, you see program ends, and at the end says, segmentation fault. That means, OK, this happened. So how do we fix this problem? How do we uh, copy things properly? When we are taking care of copying, when we have something like this, we hack through it, which means we bring our logic in it. So when actually, so when actually the data is getting copied before copying, I'll make sure that I delete the destination first. After deleting the destination first, I'm going to get the exact same size of the other data, create a new one. And after that, I'm going to copy one by one all the data from the other one to the new one. And when everything is copied from one to another, then I'm going to copy the size, make sure they are both holding the size. So essentially, I manually copy everything myself. So when it's done, I actually have two different copies. And when the first one goes out of the scope, the data of that one's going to get destroyed and nothing's wrong. When the second one is getting destroyed, the data of that one's going to get destroyed and nothing is wrong. And therefore, we're not going to have any memory leak. All right? And that's what, exactly what we have done over here. So we actually said if a string is assigned to another to a C string, don't just set it. First, delete the current data, then allocate the copy and return the current object. So that's the assignment between an object and a C string. How about an object of type string and another object? We did not set that one up. I will do it right away. So if I want to do that, now what I want to do will be this. So essentially, I'm doing this. So assignment operator created for both, but instead of a C string over here, it's going to be a constant string reference S and And it works the exact same way, so string reference s. All it does, it deletes the data, but when it copies, it copies m data of the other guy. And we are done. So essentially now, we can not only have this, we can not only have, say, B is set to C, but also we can have C is set to whatever, and we will not have any memory leak anywhere. So as you see, we are getting closer to make a string act like a regular variable that I don't have to worry about. The, Oh, the assignment that you put between two arrays, and you ask me why you are doing this, why I cannot just assign one string to another, it was because they were two different arrays. Doing this, then, <laughs> doing this, then uh, we are, uh, we don't need to worry about what's going to happen then. All right? What's going to happen if we, I get distracted so, so easily. Um, <laughs> all right. All right, so what happens is that we, uh, we have done concatenation. We're going to talk about it in a second, but now I'm focusing on, uh, mm, what you call it, uh, uh, operator robability. So we did, not, we, we did not do any helpers in here, did we? No, we didn't have any helpers. So let's do that. Let's actually have a helper over here. So uh, let's. When I print these things, so if I actually come over here and print these things that I had that I that I had in here, what was it? Uh, so it was uh, whatever I had, whatever. So let's get this one from B, so I have something in it. Now I'm gonna have A, whatever. 
something else. So if I wanted to print these things, I have to go A, A dot display, and go to new line because that thing returns O string. Okay, we, something like that. So that's our display, but I didn't want that. I want to be able to actually use C in and C out with this. So I want to actually say over here, C out, uh, say uh, A is, or A, and then show the content of A, and go to new line, and then go B, and show B, and again C, show the content of C. So if I want to do something like this, I need to make, so when C out is printing a string, I know it is within the guts of C out. Therefore, when C out is printing, that's going to return a C out. After A is printed, I'm going to have C out and the string class. Because I don't have that, I have to create and overload it. How do I overload it? Like this. So I'm going to say, all right, at left, I'm going to have C out. At right, I'm going to have a string. Because I don't have access to the class C out, I cannot open OString.header file and start modifying it. Then I have to write a helper function. That is not a member, but it tells to C++ how to handle this scenario. So I'm going to say, C++, give me an operator. And because it's tightly related to string, I, it's a nice place to put the prototype of the function in the uh, header file. OK? Therefore, in here I'm going to say, I need an operator. That is, the C out operator works with that, so I'm going to put the insertion operator. At left operand, the left operand of mine is O stream, reference left operand. At right side, uh, and because O stream doesn't have any meaning over here, I have to say STD, I cannot use using. At right side, I have the string, and I don't want to change it because I want to print it, so I'm going to say constant string reference right operand. And after this operator is executed and printed left operand using the, the right, right operand using the left operand that is OS, I need to return the O stream. So, so the next one can take over. And left operand, I'm going to check, check, set it to left C out. So it's, it's actually the left C out that, we be, that, that is coming in through that one. So let's get this one and implement it. So, Before doing that, I told you from now on, if you want to write a display function, print function, show function for any class, from now on, your display function should have the following specifications. It should return the O stream with which it printed the stuff. Also, it should receive the O stream to print the stuff with. So, your display must have this signature, and I ask you, please don't be picky if you don't understand why later on you're going to find the benefits for it. So it's std namespace, o stream reference os, that is defaulted to c out. That takes care of people who don't want to pass anything to display, and they just want to call display. So if they don't provide the o stream for it, it's going to use the c out. If they want to use this O stream, they can pass it through it. So I'm going to modify that one and also copy this one. So the display that I have over here will receive O stream, OS, and I'm going to use that O stream to print everything. So this M data that I have over here will, have, will be OS. OS and C out is the O stream that I actually printed. So um, that's that one. Now I'm going to actually write the helper function that I wanted to use. So um, 
at left side I'm receiving the C out, so I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to say return. I'm going to say right operand. Right operand already has a function called display, so I'll call it that display, and I pass the left C out into it. So again, the C out that is printing it will flow through. The C out that is getting printed over here will flow through the through your function. So C out prints A, return C out. C out and A. The C out will be passed to left C out. A will be passed to the right operand. Right operand is a new name for A, so it's going to say A dot display, pass the C out to it, and that display which uses the C out to print the data and returns it out. Therefore, my string can get printed. Okay? This is a standard way of overloading the O stream, overloading the C out. Remember this. Okay? Always have a member function and use all your dirty work in that member function and then do whatever you want. Yes, sir. Line 72. I want to overload this. I want to overload line 13. What do I have at left side? What is the type of C out? What is it made up of? What kind of a class is C out? It's an O stream, correct? So I have to create a helper operator that at left side receives an O stream. Okay? What do I get at right side? A, a string, right? So at right side, I should pass a, a string. So when this function is called, it comes over here. C out will go to left C out. A will go to right operand. It comes over here, uses the C out to pass through the display of a string. It comes in here, play, prints the data, comes out, returns the OS back. So this will be replaced back by C out. And that C out will continue with end L. Okay? Let's walk through it. And why am I getting over here? Uh, cannot overload function distinguished by return type only. What are you talking about? Did I have something like this before? No, it's just... Anyways, so let's actually do it. Let's walk through it and see what happens. So, oh, I get 55,000 errors. Let's see what is this. O stream is undefined. What? I O stream. Where? 24. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Okay, let's do it one more time. All right, so, so now it comes over here, creates A, we know how, creates B, creates C, assigns C, assigns something else to that one, and then it displays. So now I did not provide anything for display. So it comes over here and passes C out as OS. So it uses OS to print it out, which printed it out. Something else is going to get printed out. Actually, let's do it like this so we can see it properly. And I'll do like that. And then returns it back. Goes over here. Now what happens? Display is out. Now it says C out and A. So left is C out, right is a string. It comes to this function. Left C out. Right string comes in here. This is... Something else, remember? So it goes over there to the display, and using the C out that is passed to it, prints the display, prints what it's supposed to print, comes out, and goes out, and therefore it gets printed. In the other one, first <clears throat> A gets printed, and then it goes to the rest of the stuff. 
So it happens like this, very simple and straightforward. OK? Are we OK with this? All right. All right. So I didn't want to do that. They don't have a space to maximize it. There we go. All right. So next thing up, yes. The, oh, yeah. Why they are calling it helper functions? Because they are not a member of the left side. They can't be a member of left side. This is a legit way, reason, actually, to create a helper function. You always have to prefer, you always must prefer uh, using uh, member functions. But if the left side of the operator is not available, always use uh, helper functions, which is C out in this case. Now, I want to do the same thing with C in. I want them to be able to actually enter, like, like I want to say, I want to do so. So let me just save this for a second. Zero to C out overload.cpp. So that's saved. I want to be able to do this. I'm going to go see out. Please enter your name. See in name. OK, I want to be able to do this exactly like a regular string. And then I'm going to say see out. Hello, name, how are you? OK? So I want to write, so I want this scene to work. If I want this scene to work, at left side, I have I stream. At right side, I have a string object, correct? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. At left side, I'm going to have I stream. So it's going to be STD, I stream, operator. This one's going to be right shift, and then STD again. I stream left C in, or we can call it C in reference, something like that. And constant, not constant, because I want to write something into it. So string reference uh, right operator, OK? Operand. Now that I have this, I have to implement it, right? So I'll go to the CPP section, and in here I'm going to say, all right, so I have I stream. So I have to say return right operand dot read, and I pass the C in reference. But I do not have a read function. So let's write it. Exactly as I had display, I'm going to create a read. So I'm going to say std i stream read std i stream reference is that is by default c in. So if they want to actually use it without the thing and just call the read function, it's provided for them. Now we'll come back over here and please pay attention. This is the time that we are going to give you the um, challenge, OK? So how do I write the read? So I'm going to come right on the display over here. So it's got to be I stream reference string. String read I stream reference is, and I'm going to read. OK, so how do I do that? <sighs> With C in, it's a little tricky. 
how big it's going to be for the string that they, en they enter. Like how, how big I should get it. I don't know. So I'm going to just put something in here. I'm going to say, no, no one's going to enter more than 2,000 characters. OK? So I'm going to say character str 2048. So it's a local character. Then I'm going to say is dot get line. And in here, I'm going to say read from, uh, read into str up to 2048 characters and backslash n and return is. That's perfectly good for me. Why? If they enter more than 2,000 characters, C is going to fail, right? Not my responsibility anymore. Because I'm writing it for C in, they have to check afterwards to see if C in failed. And if it failed, then they know. They can flush the keyboard and try to get again. So I don't have to, sorry, I don't have to worry about that. That's a good thing about writing an object or anything. thing. If C in is taking care of validation, I don't need to take care of it in my string. I simply set, I know that if C in fails, it's going to set itself to fail. And everybody can detect it later on. So, so I can actually, in my program, write something like this. If C in dot fail, then I'm going to say C out. Really? 2048 character name. OK. And otherwise, I'm going to say hello. Of course, I'm going to flush and whatever I want to do. I, like if I want to flush it, if I want to say scene, clear, ignore, whatever I want to do, I'll do it. So scene name is going to work properly over here. But that's not good. Because sometimes you want to have the name of 40 characters. You want to have name of 50 characters. You want to have. Uh, a text of 2,000 characters, and depends uh, on the size. You want to be able to enforce that in your string so they don't go more than certain length if you want to without going through the hassle of dynamic memory allocation or anything. So what you need to do, if I would do this, in here I am having 2048, right? Instead of 2048, what I would do, because now I'm the master, I can design whatever I like, I'm going to come in string and create another attribute over here, the inside guts of my thing. And in here, I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to say unsigned int maximum read length. So I'm going to have something called maximum read length. And that's going to be the maximum read length that I want to have. Are we OK with that? All right. Now that I have the maximum read length, I can actually set that by default. If they don't mention it, how big they want it to do, I can initialize the values. Where do I do the initialization? In the initialization area. So I'm going to say set that one, say, to 1024. If they don't mention it, 1,000 characters is good enough. And? I'll come over here, oh. and instead of having the value over here as 2048 hard-coded, I'm going to put that value. But because it's an array, I have to actually allocate it. So I'm going to say, uh, I have to have a dynamic. So I have to say character string, pointer string is set to new character that big. And then after the reading is done, I'm going to delete it. Right? But of course, after reading it, I have to set it. I forgot to set it, and nobody ever said anything. I read a string, but I didn't put it in my string. Let's put that. How to set it? I'm going to say operator equal str, right? I set it to that one. I forgot to put that one before. Well, anyways, since I forgot, you forgot. No problem. All right? So, so what I'm doing, I say, allocate to that size, get lined up to that size, set my string to that value, delete the string, and get out of here. That's beautiful. Not only that, 
now that I have a member value over here, I can make the user actually uh, set that to different sizes if they want to. So I can actually come over here and create a couple of queries, setters and getters, and say, okay, void set cn length. cn max length. Sorry for the bad, like long names like that. And in here, I'm going to say uh, unsigned int length. And I can, for them to be able to see what is the, oh, no, I'm not going to say set. I'm going to say C in max length. And in here, I'm going to say unsigned int C in max length. And this one actually returns the value. So what user can do, depending on what is the size of their read and write, they can actually instruct my string to have that length. So in here, I simply say <coughs> return. Of course, this belongs to string. And this belongs to string. I'm going to say over here, return. What do I return? I return uh, m max read length. And in here, I am setting the m max <coughs> read length to the length that is coming in. So now, if the user doesn't care, it's just going to say like that. Or if they, if they want to, they can say name dot c in max length, and I'm going to say 40. Now when I'm doing a C in, it's going to be 40 characters. Or it's going to be 100, or it's going to be 1,000. Your challenge is this. Your challenge is this. Remove this so we don't have, or if you want to have it, have it. But make this action fully automatic. Which means detect and resize the memory based on user entry. If user entered more than the value that they entered, resize the memory and set it to the size that user is entering. So they don't need to set anything. If user enters five characters, allocate five. If user enters five billion characters, five billion characters. See if you can do it. So no one can set anything before. You simply see in, and after you did the see in, it should set it for you automatically. If you can do that, you get 5%. You have to give me the right thing. Test it. Make sure it works. If it works, you get 5%. If you give me bad garbage code, I'll reduce 5%. Okay? No, I'm kidding. But make sure that it's good code. Yes? Yeah, you are not supposed to do it under the water. What do you mean, restriction? Yeah. Any, yeah. As long as you use C++. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, th I didn't get what, what you mean by restrictions. Like, do they thingy, like, give it, like, what, three, four days, five days? Think about it. It's a, good, it's, it's a good brain teaser. See if you can do it. I'd like to see if you can do it. Try it. Okay? So, again, take the limit out. So, we don't need to set anything in this string, in this String class. Our string class should work perfectly with any size of string uh, of, of data entry that it's receiving. If you can do that, good job. Okay? That's that. Uh, yeah, the other thing that I did not teach and I haven't taught yet and I don't want to, we're going to do it in lab together. Okay? Uh, so, I want you to go through these things, go through it 
go through the string, walk through it. We have uh, concatenation done over here with operator equal and everything. Walk through it and see if everything works properly. See how it works. So when you come for a lap, you're ready. Walk, go through that dynamic memory allocation. See how it's done. So when you're coming to lab, we're going to do it all together, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll learn something out of that lab. OK? Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Should I stop the recording, or as soon as I stop, somebody's going to ask a question? <laughs> Any question one? Any question two?